<laughs> Sorry. Shalom. Hi, I'm Libby. And I'm Gil. And this is Hebrew Words of the Week. Biblical edition. Yeah, today we're going to talk about names in Hebrew from the Bible that became something else in Hebrew and they are used in English in a different way. Sounds very difficult? Not at all. Let's start from the beginning. Bereshit. Genesis, great man. The first person, Adam. Adam. It's basically the same in Hebrew and in English, except that we say Adam and you say Adam. Adam in Hebrew is also a human being, every human being. Adam. Adam's female partner was Eve. Chava. Chava in Hebrew is also a farm. I don't think that was the meaning they were going for, but a farm. I'm moving on! We skipped some generations. If you want the entire dynasty, it's in Genesis chapter 5. <laughs> Never mind that. And we go straight on to Noah. Noach. Noach. It's the same as in English, but with a ch. Noach. What does that in modern Hebrew mean? Comfortable. Comfortable. Really? Noach! We're gonna skip, 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 skip. Because there's Abraham and all of the people and we're going straight to Isaac. Yeah, there was a flood and this whole thing. And we're just skipping all that. And yeah, the to... ark, everything. Isaac. In Hebrew, Yitzchak. Yitzchak in Hebrew is a very popular name. It's biblical and it has a literal meaning also. Yitzchak is he will laugh. This is actually the reason that the name Yitzchak was given to Yitzchak. His mother, Sarah, left when she heard that she will be able to have a baby because she was very old at the time. So Yitzchak, he will laugh. And if we're talking about this, let's talk about laughter. How do you say laughter in Hebrew? Tzchok. Tzchok. It's that ch again. Very funny. For English speakers, by the way, a tz is also pretty hard. Oh, tzchok. Good luck with that. <laughs> so Yitzchak has two sons. The oldest was Esav, and the youngest was Yaakov, Jacob. Yaakov in Hebrew literally says he will follow, and he indeed followed his older brother. Jacob was the second child, but he got the privileges of the firstborn. He bought them from Esav. So Yaakov, he will follow, he indeed followed, but he became the firstborn. Staying in the same family, moving on to Jacob's wife, Leah. The first wife, Leah. Leah in Hebrew is literally a tired woman. And if you want to say a tired woman in another word, you say ayefa. We talked about Aifa when we talked about us being tired and I was Aifa, tired. Watch it, it's, uh, the link is below. Actually, the story of Leah and her sister, her younger sister, is very famous and very interesting because Jacob wanted to marry the younger sister, Rachel. Rachel. He worked seven years for the father of Rachel and Leah, and then under the chupa, in the marriage ceremony, he just discovered that when you are to marry one 
of the sisters. You have to marry the older one. So he got stuck in a way with Lea. Lea was indeed the oldest. She was tired and she didn't really want to be there, but she had to be fixed. So Jacob had to work an extra seven years to get Rachel also because those days you could marry more than one woman. So Rachel is Rachel, but in Hebrew there is another meaning, Gil. Kibsa. A sheep. A sheep like be. Kibsa. Kibsa. That's the word that people usually use to refer to a sheep. Yeah, so if you know Rachel, go ahead. <laughs> so what have we learned? That polygamy was totally cool in biblical times? Only if you're a man. Yeah, I mean, women were kind of property, which isn't cool at all. Not cool. Adam. Adam. A human being. Adam. Eve. Chava. A farm. Chava. Noah. Noah. Comfortable. Noah. Isaac. Yitzchak. He will laugh. Yitzchak. Jacob. Yaakov. He will follow. Yaakov. Bia. Lea. A tired woman. Lea or Ayefa. Rachel. Rachel. A sheep. Rachel or Kivsa. Do you have a biblical name? Do you know what's the meaning of your name? Do you have a Hebrew name? Does your name have a different meaning in another language? Oh, that's interesting. Hmm. Tell us in the comments below. Do you like stories from the Bible? Do you like the Bible? I think it's a wonderful book. Yeah. Very interesting book. Yeah, you don't have to be religious to love the Bible. It's a storybook. It's a history book. You can take what you want from it. You can actually download it as sort of an audiobook in Hebrew. We will put a link in the description. Nice. Actually, I don't believe that story, you know. What? The story about the seven years and the other seven years? I don't years believe and... that he was cheated into marrying Lea. I think it was like, listen, I'll work for you for seven years. By that time, Lea will probably be married, so I'll take the little one. Ah. And then she wasn't married yet. So he just married her and said, listen, I'll work for another seven years, and then I'll take the little one. Yes, yeah, she wasn't so little. She was... 14 years older. But maybe when they made the deal, like Lea was, let's say, 12, and Rachel was, I don't know, 9. So he said, well, by the time she'll be 19, she'll probably be married. So I'll take the little one. In seven years, she'll be 16. I'll be able to marry her. Whoa. But think about it. When he bought her with the ages that people married at that time, when he bought her for seven years of work, it means that she would have gotten to the age that she would get married in seven years. She must have been like 9, 10, 11. That's sick. <laughs> sorry. And sorry, biblical times. Ugh. Like us. Leave comments. Share. Subscribe. And love us. See you next week. Bye bye. And that's all. Clicky, clicky. Clicky, clicky. Yep. <laughs>